Example 171.5. A manager is worried about hiring older workers because he fears that they may be more likely to call out sick. He decides to look at the attendance records for a sample of employees from the previous year. The data is given below. Find a 95% confidence interval for the average number of sick days used by a 53-year-old employee. Okay, so the problem clearly states that we want to find a confidence interval, right? And it's talking about the confidence interval for the average number of sick days used by 53-year-old employees. What we want to do in this problem then is to begin to follow the steps of a confidence interval. Now normally step one is our data step. Here, based on the structure of the interval that's required for this problem, what I would like you to do is I would like you to first come up with the linear regression model. So we're going to need that model. Now they gave us beta uh, not hat and beta one hat. In other words, we have the pieces that fill in the model. So remember y hat is equal to beta not hat plus beta one hat times x. So when we plug that in for our particular scenario, the beta hat not or the beta not hat is 21.14 plus the, the slope estimator, which is negative 0.33 times the x value. Now here's the thing, we have an x value, so don't just put x. The x value is given to us in the problem. It's the 53 in this problem because that is the number that we're asked to talk about, right? We're going to call that xp. So I'm going to put a little notation here. I'm going to say xp is equal to 53. And if we want to make our prediction for a 53-year-old person here, so we're going to put in 53 into the model. Let's see what that gives us then as an answer. Okay, so we'll have 21.14 minus 0.33 times 53. And we get 3.65. So 3.65 is the value that we come up with in step one. All right, so that's part of our data step for our confidence interval to figure out what the predicted y value is. And remember what this predicted y value is. It's essentially our prediction of how many sick days this individual would take based on their age alone, right? So based on the fact that they are 53 years old, we'd say we predict them to have almost four absentees across the year, right? Okay, so now from there, let's go on to the rest of the data step, which would really be covered by all of this down here. So I'm not going to recopy it since it's right next to us, but all of this information is what we need in the, next, in the rest of the data step. Let's go on to step two then. Step two is where we normally get our table value from, right? Our critical value. So in this case, it's going to be a T value. It'll be T because we have a small sample size, right? And it's T alpha divided by two. And it has a certain degrees of freedom. That degrees of freedom is n minus 2. So let's go figure out what that is. The alpha here, since it's a 95% confidence level, by now I think you know that's a 5% alpha. So 0 0.05, but that will be divided by 2 because it's a t alpha divided by 2 value. And the degrees of freedom is n minus 2. The number of values we have here, paired values, I should say, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 pairs. If you take away 2, you get 3. So ultimately we're looking for the t.025 comma 3 value from our t table. Let's go to our t table and figure out what that number is. Okay, so we're in the 0 0.025 column. We're looking at 3 degrees of freedom. We find the value 3.182. Okay, so that's going to give us 3.182. 3.182. All right, so now that we have our table value, we go on to our step three. Remember, your step three is usually the margin of error step. So for us, that margin of error is actually a fairly complicated formula, but we have everything we need to fill it in. So the margin of error is going to be t alpha divided by 2 times s times the square root of, and this square root is kind of complicated, but it's 1 over n plus, and here we're going to have an expression that's squared, and that expression is going to be xp, in other words, the predicted x value, where we made our prediction at, minus the sample mean x bar divided by the sum of squared values for the x's, right? The sum of squared for the x's, or the variation estimator for the x's. All right, so we have this information now. Now we're going to plug in some numbers. Well, t alpha divided by 2 becomes 3.182. 3.182, right? That was given to us from step two. S was provided in the problem. It's 0 0.31623. So 0 0.31623. 
Then we're going to multiply by the square root here, the square root of 1 over n. Now we said before our n was 5 because there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data values. So that's 1 over 5 plus xp, that's the number we're making the prediction at, that's 53 minus x bar. They tell us x bar is 38. Close that up, hit the square there, and then divide by, and then ultimately here, the SSXX, which is 1,000. That's given to us as well. Okay, so it's very nice of them to give us all that information. It makes our life a lot easier. Let's work out this margin of error and see what we get finally. Okay, so the margin of error will be 3.182 times 0.31623 times the square root of, that's one fifth, that's 0.2, or you can do one divided by five in your calculator, it's fine either way, plus, now put the parentheses you see here, so I'm gonna put the parentheses and then 53 minus 38, I will close that parentheses up and hit the square, the exponent, and then I will divide by 1000. Finally, I will close up that square root. This is why you need a calculator that allows you to see what you're working out, this is a lot to put in a calculator at once. When we're done, we have, approximately 0 0.655991, right? That's roughly what the error is. I'm just gonna store that in my calculator so I have it for later. I'll store it in as X and we'll use it in the next step. Now, our next step is normally, you know, in most problems to do like the point estimator minus the error and then point estimator plus the error. Well, our point estimator is what we found in step one. In other words, this quantity here that quantity of y hat, right? We're going to use that in step four. So our step four, our final step basically, is going to be y hat minus the error, comma y hat plus the error. So once we plug those numbers in, we have our solution. So y hat is 3.65, it'll be minus uh, 0 0.656, let's say, just for round numbers, and then we'll do the same thing, but this time add, so plus, 0 0.656. Got to squeeze that in here. Sorry about that. We'll work it out though and you can see the final answer here below. When we finish the calculation, we end up with the following. So we're going to have 3.65 minus the error that we found. That'll give you roughly 2.99. And then we'll continue, but we'll add this time that same error in and we get 4.31, 4.31. All right, so what do we say about this interval, right? Well, this is a confidence interval, right? For the average number of days. So we're gonna say we are 95% confident. We are 95% confident. The average number of sick days, right? The average number of sick days will be between and in this case it will be between 2.99 and 4.31 days, right? That's the average number of sick days taken by a 53 year old employee, right? So if you have a bunch of 53-year-old employees, the average sick time or sick day, number of sick days taken by these employees is just basically somewhere between three and four days, right? So essentially we're talking about um, not a very large number of sick days per year. In fact, if you look at the data, what you'll see is that it appears that younger employees seem to be sick more often or call in sick more often. This probably has less to do with their susceptibility to colds, but rather more to do with their desire to be at work, right? So younger employees may not be as responsible as older employees. So it turns out that maybe this manager has it backwards, right? He should be more worried about hiring the young employees who are less likely to show up on time and show up to work.